Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure will take us up to Los Angeles, to a location that has been emulated almost in full, just about in full size reproductions here at Disneyland and in Florida at Walt Disney World and was the spot for one of the greatest and most popular animated full-length features had their premiere. Let's go into some history. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Charged up the camera batteries, just getting my stuff together, putting it in the bag, and ready to roll. You're right, Big the Foot. Without the success of that film, we probably wouldn't have Disneyland. The LA skyline over there. I don't know why I said it that way, but that's what it is, Big the Foot. The houses behind me, this development, residential section, was created in 1922 and is one of the oldest in Los Angeles. In fact, it is said it is the first to have underground utilities, and it was given the name Carthay Center. Four years later, in 26, a historic theater was built just down the way, and after that gained popularity, they said, you know what, let's change the name from Center to Carthay Circle. Ring a bell? All of the homes are completely different. None of them built in the same fashion, no two alike. And the street names were after notable figures in the Gold Rush era. And it wasn't just any old theater either. One of the most popular in all of Hollywood, especially considering when it came to having premieres. And on December 21st, 1937, a little movie by the name of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs took place right over here. You also notice that right up here at these cross streets, McCarthy Vista. Now, the name McCarthy is the last name of the gentleman who we have to thank. He was the developer. McCarthy? Carthay? They basically, well, he took his name and gave it a little more pronounced feel. McCarthy. Got it? Right where DeVale Drive, the 6200 West Block, links up with this intersection. Over in that little courtyard area, well, it's kind of obscured by the tree, but there is a statue right there in the middle with the tree trunk behind it. Stepping up on the curb, you can see a little pathway has been cleared through the foliage. And there is the Pioneer, standing strong after many years. There used to be a little water area here. Uh, not a fountain per se, but just a water section surrounding this guy standing perched up upon the rock. I don't believe that's the original rock he was standing on. It might be, but I don't think it is, judging by the photos. Sculptor Henry Lyon created this in the same year that behind Dan, they, his, they named him Dan, the statue here, and we're using this as a reference point because behind Dan is where Carthay Theater used to sit, right back there. And there are some of the sculptor's other works still on property that can be seen from decades ago stands seven feet tall. He's got his pan there. Any luck, buddy? And weighs over 500 pounds. Yep, he's just searching to see if he's found any gold or silver or any copper nuggets down there. Might have made a little more sense when the pond used to be here. But I don't see anything here in the, in the dirt, Dan. Keep looking though, don't give up. Okay, I stand corrected. It looks as if two years prior, so in 24, the statue was placed here, but they didn't dedicate it till the same year as the theater in 26. Here's a photo of J. Harvey McCarthy there on the far end with the glasses, watching the sculptor create his masterpiece. J. Harvey McCarthy was the one who created the theater. Here's the dedication, quite a little congregation there gathered around the water. It used to be a drugstore back there, and that was in the forefront of the theater. The theater was behind 
where the drugstore used to be. You see the water there as well. See, the rock is a little higher in this photo than it is current day. He was also stolen back in 2009 and then refound 2010. They replaced him, fixed him up. He was cut in half. Whoever took him cut him in half, but he was put back together and back to his original spot. He was quite disheveled at the scrapyard. Good thing they got him. Get him back. I read that the neighbors around here really missed him. More or less from this angle is where you'll be able to match up and tell precisely where the theater used to be, way back behind him there. In the way over there, probably 100, 200 yards behind Dan here. There goes the bus. As mentioned a moment ago, there's the drugstore there, the far end of the screen, and the very immense tower of Carthay Circle, the neon lights just past the street. You can still see the street still exists. A little busier current day, however. And there's a school way back in the distance. That school still exists, even though the theater is long gone. You can almost tell where the waterway would have been, kind of like kind of just kind of tucked away here in this section. And then all of this you know, many, many years ago, you've been waiting ankle high, maybe even waist high. Probably not that deep. But you would have had some company. Had any luck? And in the same little area is this not so little tree. And I point that out because now I'm going to walk over there and show where the premiere was to what the critics called. Disney's Folly. The critics didn't think it was a good idea. The first of many career choices that Walt took that proved the critics wrong. Another one being Disneyland, which, you know, happened in the late or mid-50s. They called that Walt's Folly. So Disney's Folly, which tended to be a success, becoming one of the highest grossing and you adjust it by today's ratio on inflation, the number one animated film above Frozen, above Incredibles, think about that. And the critics, they shunned it. As well as the American Film Institute granting it and saying that it is the greatest animated film of all time. I think a lot would agree with that. Groundbreaking. One of the first American here in the US full-length animated features. No one said it would do well, but he knew something. He probably remembers when Walt came through. Maybe, I, I don't know. He may have been too busy looking for silver. Also should mention that with the money that was made off Snow White, he took that and parlayed it into Disneyland. Because, you know, you got to have money to build a theme park. And there was so much profit. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm disturbing Dan here. I got to, I got to move on. There are now two totally different types of buildings there. Now, keep in mind, obviously, you know, the theme park Disneyland was not created right after the film's success. But that's what kind of, kind of catapulted the company, the studios. And he went for another vision. He was a man of many visions. The original building was... Destroyed in 1969. I really wish it was still around. It'd be amazing to see with my own eyes. However, there are, you know, there are recreations in two different spots on both coasts, east and west coast, Florida and here in California. Physical address is 6316 San Vicente Drive. There's the street sign. If you step into Hollywood Studios on their Sunset Drive, you can see their version. It's the smaller of the two recreations and is a gift shop. And the other is a little larger, but still not quite as massive as the original, located at DCA, Disney California Adventure in Anaheim. And it, it has a restaurant in it, even though there is no theater and it's not in a complete circle like its predecessor that it's modeled after. It's pretty dang close, the way it looks. When the premiere happened, all the guests of honor would have pulled up right here out of their limos, walked in, 
and you will see the bust of a statue from the same guy who created the Pioneer. And this, this little area here is pretty much the same on either side. Those buildings are different, but this little courtyard, it's kind of the same. This is an aerial view from back in the good old days. In the top left corner there, you will see the, the park I was just in where the little water lake was. And then I crossed over. So right about there is where I'm standing. So in the middle of the courtyard is where the big pillar was. It reached to the heavens. And that courtyard is right there in the middle. And the sidewalks are kind of sort of the same. Okay, after reshifting where I'm standing, not exactly, they have redone the pavement. But this angle here is precisely this angle. So the main entrance, a lot of those famous photos of celebrity guests going in the entrance, would have been right there. The marquee would have been straight ahead. Pretty amazing to think about, right? And this screen grab of Walt Disney exiting his vehicle would have been taken right there from the road as he got out of his vehicle past that bust and right up there kind of near the roof line would have been a huge neon sign stating this location directly above my head there's that there's the sign they got the lights so you're going up sign there and then kind of tilt this way a little bit would be that big that big pillar in the sky. Really two of the main focal points to line everything up. Well, not only this courtyard, but this bust can be seen very prominently in a few photographs, a few historical photographs from that time period. Still here. There's also another piece of documentation from back then that has a street sign in it. It is around this back corner, I believe right over here. Zoomed in just a little bit, but it says Foster Drive street sign there on the far end now that I've kind of zoomed out a little bit more. So we're looking for this angle here on Foster. The 900 South Block, let me just turn this direction just a bit and you will get the proper perspective. Oh, how things change over five decades, 51 plus years, give or take. It's a good thing historical evidence is floating around out there. Definitely a good thing. The pathway extends back to here and there is a rock with some little placards on there. The Carthay Circle Neighborhood Association. The Carthay Circle Community. And on this side, dedicated to the native sons of the Golden West from the Historical Society. Quite a number of beautiful trees through here. It's very fascinating. I didn't notice the first walkthrough, but take a look where the original entrance was. Look at the name of this cafe right here. This, this is the precise spot where you would have entered under the marquee. How cool is that? And what happened in there? That film changed a lot of things. You know, if you know anything about Disney or if you've gone to the theme parks, it all kind of stemmed from that success, as I mentioned a moment ago. But think of the attractions and the rides. You know, Snow White Scary Adventures, or the Mine Train, the new Mine Train, or meet and greets with the characters that you see all the time in the parks, based on the film that premiered right over my shoulder. Taken from where I am standing at the moment, would be this. Yep, where my feet are planted is where the photographer took that. Totally unrelated, but for another movie, they, they placed a wrecked plane. I'm gonna head back across the road now. Forgot to mention something that's over there by the Pioneer. I had to cross back over and, and show that spot. Another spot, not the Pioneer spot, but a little farther down than that. It's always fun to retrace steps while taking steps, you know, because I'm walking, I'm stepping, so I'm not only retracing, but taking, taking them myself. It doesn't look as impressive as it probably did back then, but this little grass section, median, that runs through the middle of both either oncoming or going the opposite direction traffic, they had real life versions created 
from the homes and different you know, facades seen in the animated Snow White right through here that guests or those who could not attend or those who did attend the premiere could see in real life. All set up right here. True story. Might be a little tough to see, but I wanted to show it in this location because here's one of them that sat right there. The Pioneer down there and the theater behind him. Gotta love it. This one for me really drives the point home. Okay, just take a moment to kind of let it soak in. The tr that tree there is that tree over to the side is still there. Wow. Certainly has grown quite a bit over the years. A butterfly just went by. <laughs> That's awesome. I get pretty excited about this stuff. Just kind of makes sense to hold this up in the proper spot. Don't you think? It's, this is about as close as it gets right here. Under the glitz and the glamour of old Hollywood. Right there. Can you see everybody pulling up right now in their limos? I kind of wonder if people that are getting on that off that bus have any idea of the of what took place here. I'm sure they've seen Snow White. Maybe they should know. This is where Snow White, the premiere, took place. I don't think they heard me. The person getting out of that car definitely didn't hear me. At 8.45 on that faithful evening, things changed. That's gonna do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. It helps keep you in the loop and update on future uploads here on this channel. Take it a step further, ring that notification bell. And if you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a, a big thumbs up. Still nothing in there. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is up. Oh, look at this. Look at this. There. Up. Oh, there we go. I did, I just saw that the sculptor has engraved. Well, they have. Well, the sculptor probably didn't engrave that, but they have. They have documented here for, for posterity. The vlog is over. To the gallant pioneers of '49, of whom Daniel, that's where we get the name Dan, was a leader and an outstanding example. See you later, Dan.